Ancient of modern, 266, thou whose almighty word. scriptural reading is taken from the book of 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 13 to 18 and it says but I do not want you to be ignorant brethren concerning those who have fallen asleep lest you sorrow as others who have no hope 14 for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so God will Bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the temple and with the trumpet of God, and the dead 
and the dead in the Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with this word. This is the word of God. Hallelujah. When we walk with the Lord in the light of its word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his goodwill, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. We want to believe our Father trusted in the Lord, he walked with the Lord. He obeyed the Lord. Even the heavenly journey he has is taking is going with the Lord. Trust and obey. S S and S six four two.
And we all rise as we do the last stanza of that hymn. it before we take a second lesson we shall sing the same AMR 397 on page 9 of our program now no father mindful of the love
second scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6, and it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That's where I am, there you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the word of God.
may please sit. We want to invite tribute first by Dr. Mrs. Choma Okechiku. Church, praise the Lord. Um, it will take more than the duration of this service to sufficiently talk about the man my father was. Two strong traits I know he had were his love for books and education and his power of vision. My daddy rubbed off his love for books and education on everyone that came in contact with him. I remember we had cooks that came as secondary school students and eventually became graduates. We had drivers that, we had gate men that he allowed to combine education and going to university, and they eventually became graduates. Every contact with my father was like reading a best-selling motivational book. When you leave him, you are in a hurry to go and improve upon your life, especially in the area of academics. I can remember a mantra that my dad used to always say anytime I'm going back to school, when I was in medical school. He always made sure that his last statement to me was, Ama read your book, oh. And so it went on for years, and I always heard his voice, even while I was in school, read your book. But when I got to final year, my mom became, I think she became worried that all I would have been thinking about in life was books. So she now added her own phrase. Once daddy says, Ama read your books, mommy will add, fine husband, oh. And so that's how he was. He also had a strong power of vision. Daddy could see the best possible finished products of every human raw material. I can remember what he used to tell us about how we would all be when we grow up. How we'll all be professionals and experts in our own field. And indeed it has come to pass. Daddy also extended his power of vision to his work as a leader in the university. Daddy used to tell me how one day in the River State University, there will be a college of medicine. He also told me that one day, everything concerning the administrative work of the university will be com completely computerized, and indeed all have come to pass. Honestly, I count it a rare privilege to be his child. May his soul rest in peace. From the community. Praise the Lord. I want to count it really the privilege and honor uh, to speak a distribute to a worthy mentor, a great man, an academic of international repute. I want to first and foremost thank you all for doing him this honor by coming for this service of song. When I see this retinue of people here in the service, gives me a great joy about what he always talks about, and that is legacy. I want to speak on for perspective. Emeritus professor, as a man who feared God, Emeritus professor who loved academics, Emeritus professor who loved his family, a marital professor who emptied himself to the community, to the nation. He was my mentor, my teacher. My contact with him revealed that this is a man that feared God in all his dealings. He would always let us know that it is important to fear God. Irrespective of his academic brilliance, like some who want to see, because of just little peep of window that the Lord has given to them, 
they will begin to arrogate themselves all knowledge. But the Bible makes us to know that he who says there is no God is a big fool. So he's a man that feared God, and you can see it. He modeled that life. There was no corruption in him. He was focused, he was committed to the things and ways of God. Emeritus professor loved his family. You can see beautiful family. He was very passionate about them. This daughter, just Dr. Choma, just gave it just a brief, like she said. If we continue to speak about him today, we will not live here. He loved them. He loved his wife. In fact, I was speaking with the wife. His wife said, my professor loved me. What a testimony. And he loved the children. And then, as an academic, professor was unassailable in academic brilliance. He was totally committed and focused. It's not today's academic where he, money wasn't his focus. He believed in building human capital development, which is the missing link for our country today. In his own effort, he did produce quality human capital. Cap human capital is that which will liberate this country. In his stay on earth, he was committed to producing the best. He's a man of excellence. If you have passed through him, there are so many PhDs and professors will attest to this. A man of excellence, attention to detail. He was focused, he was committed to academics. And then to the community. He's a great son of Alioba. There are very few that you can count today about. He never gave us silver nor gold, but he gave us that which we could feed for life. He made us, wherever we are today, that we can be ourselves. What a legacy. In his public service, people will know that he lived above board. What else can you ask of a man? In fact, the latest testimony, I was in National Institute of Policy and Studies in Kuru, Nips. Here his work was speaking. Because he came there and put together part of the manual that we use today. So he served the community, he served the family, he was so selfless. He emptied himself. He came with all and then gave all of them back to the world. He came empty and he left empty. In between those periods where he was greatly endowed emeritus professor, he emptied himself. So today, we are not mourning like the Thessalonians said. Because we know where he is. He is having fun in today's language wherever he is today. But the issue there is, what is the lessons learned? The lessons learned for us is, one, we have to be committed, we have to be focused, we have to be heavily minded, and then we have to build human capital. May God bless his soul. Amen. Amen. Can you put your hands together? Thank you very much, sir. That was uh, our brother Uche Oluwu, MNI, speaking on behalf of the community. We want to invite Men's League Group 5.
Praise the Lord. We thank God for the life of our member. We are group five. We pride ourselves as the men of Isaka of this church. Because God has helped us to know the times and seasons. And our member, Professor Ahiazo, taking a cue from that, has been very, very courteous to the group. I can tell you that he is not owing the group financially. as he was sick. He made our group his family group. And so we are not strangers to the family. The family understand that their father is a member of our group. Our prayer is that God will keep his soul in peace. Amen. Thank you, Group 5 of Men's League, Christ Church, Port Harcourt. I want to invite uh, Professor Ideria to please come, Elder Professor Ideria, to speak on behalf of the church. Praise the Lord. It is with a very heavy, very, very heavy heart that I stand here talking about Sir Professor Emeritus Augustine Ayazu. A fine academic, and the community has already told us about his economic life. Yesterday, we've released in the university at 5 p.m. on all about his academic life. But above all, this day, we emphasize that he was a humble man, God-fearing, of quiet disposition, but acting for the Lord. That was Professor Emeritus Ayazo. He had a ministry. We were all in the university, today called River State University. And we all proceeded down here to bow to the Lord. And in his quiet disposition, seated out there, most people wouldn't even know he was there. He was quietly doing the work of the Lord. And his ministry was youth ministry. Most members of Christ Church did not know. Most people wouldn't bother about their children and the youth fellowship. For outsiders, what we call the CC. YF, Christ Church Youth Fellowship. But as these children were growing, Professor Emeritus Ayazo pushed them. Then he also growing to do nothing but to be strong members of the Youth Fellowship. So Chinedu today, Gina Chinedu we will we'll soon speak, was the first person, his first son, his son, 
and first child was the first person to play the keyboard there. Not only that, not only that, he left a legacy that we see up to this day. We all see our grateful people taking the guitar today and dancing with the guitar. It was Chinedu out there who taught grateful people to play the guitar. His next child, the daughter, in Kiru, because of his push, she became a pioneer of the CCYF magazine called The Tree of Life. That is a true daughter of the professor. And of course, Joma, you, she's already spoken. She was not left out. She was a member of the ESCO, ESCO of the CCYF. And she was engaged in welfare arm of the CCYF. These were the children. Not only that, he was like a father to the youths. Anything they were doing, he ensured that he contributed towards it. In the university where we were living, I did not, but he collected the youths from Christ Church into his house and continued to advise them to be better students and better people for God. That was Professor Hayazo. He did a lot for the youth. And I know most of us in Christ Church did not know this. And where was he sitting? Because the youths were there, he was always seated up there. When it was that going up was some, with some difficulty, he came down there. I remember one day when I went out there and said, you have not been in church for a while. He said, no, you failed. I was no longer there. I was down here. That was Professor Ayazo. He rests. He rests. And he rests in only one place. In the bosom of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I would like to say that in the last days of this great man, Professor Emeritus, you have heard it all, a God-fearing, humble man, very peaceful. Even as I came to meet him, as I used to visit, to pray with him, and to give him the Holy Eucharist, he was always very stable and peaceful. And even to the end of his life, the Lord was with him. You have heard of a humble, a God-fearing and peaceful man, a very fulfilled professor who made it in life. Above all, you have heard that he loved God and he released his children for the service of God Most High. I will want you to think about it, especially we parents who are still alive. How are you living your life? Have you released yourself to the service of God and humanity? If you have, what of your children? Think about it. As we listen to the word of God, I'd like us to rise and sing only stanza one of the hymn, Let There Be Light. It's found on page number six. Let there be light. May we all rise, please. 
thou who almighty word just stands the one Please be seated and let us pray. We ask that we help us, Holy Spirit, as we want to hear you speak to us your word. Speak, Lord, to convince us. Speak, Lord, to give us direction. Speak, Lord, to keep us in remembrance that one day we will leave this world. Sweet Holy Spirit, breathe over your word. Breathe of our heart, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. I want on behalf of the church to, first of all, let me say thank God for the family of the Hayazus, especially our mommy. I used to call her mommy prof. I want to thank you. Thank Chinedu, at least I've known Chinedu. I'm seeing other you for the first time. I want to thank God for your life, for the strength to bear the calling home of our Father. I want on behalf of the church say it is well. The first day I had the opportunity to meet the late Professor Hayazu, I discovered that Professor had been following all the programs online in the church. When I and my wife entered, mommy was introducing us to him. He now remembered my wife, the woman that used to sing. And he will know the Sunday mommy did not sing. He will know. He will say, you did not sing this Sunday. So mommy prof will be telling my wife, that my husband knew you didn't sing last Sunday. So he was following the services online. And I was surprised. And that day we met him, he was so calm. I was just asking myself, who is this? Who is this man? And within the few time, minutes we spent with him, I learned something from him. It's somebody you should stay with and learn a lot. You can learn a lot from him. He's a father indeed. Being a vice chancellor, I believe he has touched not just River State has touched the world because students from River State University, those that passed through him when he was a lecturer, I believe most of them are all over the world now. And, this, and these persons are the seed of Professor Ayazu. So he has touched the world. And we've not just come here to mourn him, we've come to celebrate him. We've come to celebrate an erudite scholar, a man of many parts, a man that has touched lives of people, a man that people can vouch for, a man that the church can stand and say, yes, we are proud to associate with Professor 
with Professor Hayazu being a member of Christ Church. So we've not come to mourn, we're just going to celebrate. If you look at the hymns, you discover none of the hymns even speak of burial at all, or a kind of a song we sing in funeral services. We're just singing songs of praise, songs to encourage people so that you can see light at the end of the tunnel. So we have come to tell you that the professor is encouraging you that where I am, I want you to come there. It's a better place. Amen. I say life is beautiful because after the creation, the Bible said, the Lord said, everything he has created is what? Good. Life can be beautiful because life came from God himself. When he created man, made it, when he molded man out of the soil, the scripture says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, and he breathed into man, and man became what? A living soul. So what God gave man is beautiful. Life is just beautiful. The Lord God wanted beautiful things. He's a God of beauty. That is why he gave man the gift of life. The Lord created man, beautiful things into mankind. He planted a beautiful garden called Eden and put man in the midst of it and provided everything for man so that the beautiful man will enjoy the beautiful life he has given to him. If life, if people say this life is terrible, people say this life is not good, people will always look at the life as something that some people like what happened last year. When people were dying like flies in some nations, people were just wondering, what kind of life is this? In one of the service of songs I preached here, life is funny. But now I am saying that life is equally what? Beautiful. Men don't, everybody is saying this life is horrible. So, too much of pain, suffering here and there. But for him that has given us life, life is still what? Beautiful. And the cause of making life beautiful for man, 
there was a brutal interruption to this beautiful life when man fell into sin. When man invited bitterness to his life, when man despised God and decided to come into covenant with the devil, when man felt that we should look at the other side, but they never knew that the other side was the side of bitterness, the side of pain, the side of regret. That brutal interruption made life to become bitter. Life became bitter in the Garden of Eden. Even God himself decided to chase man out of the Garden of Eden. But before he did that, he made provision for the salvation of mankind. He said that the seed of the woman shall bruise your head, but you will bruise his heel. In other words, God is saying, I can, stick, I can still make life to be more beautiful than ever. The life can be more beautiful than it used to be. When sin, when man surrendered his authority to sin, when man decided to give himself to sin, but man decided to yield himself to sin. Like the way we are seeing men. People today in the world have given themselves to corruption. They have given themselves to nepotism. To bribery. And to sorting out. Especially in our higher institution. Where if you want to make it. You must sort out some lecturers. If we don't sort them out, four years course will become six years for you. If you do not succumb to the antics of the wicked ones, we will tell you, if you don't meet me in such a so place, forget it. This course, you will continue to have a flight. Men decided to give himself to falsification of age just to get employment. Men began to look for the things that are temporal. Men began to pursue the riches of the world at all costs, selling their souls to the devil. Men decided to join one cult or the other to become strong, to become important, to become famous in the society. I want to tell you, life outside God is bitterness. Life outside God is hopelessness. Nobody can enjoy life outside God. If you like, have all the certificates in the world. Nobody. You cannot. Professor Ayazu has gone to be with the Lord. Look at the testimonies of his life. He stayed with God to the end. He stayed with the Lord until when it's time for his maker to call him Home. He decided to yield himself back to God. Are you among those who are still owing your workers deliberately? You don't want to pay them. Or are you working in the government? You know the reason why they refuse to pay pensioners. You are part of the trouble and the pains of this society. You are part of those making this life to be bitter. Are you among those 
who have decided to yield your soul for evil, and you are sitting down here to celebrate a man that has made it with his, with his maker, are you among those who don't have good testimony before God? You may have before men, but do you have a testimony before God? Can the Lord look down from heaven and say, look out, behold, my servant is blameless. If the Lord cannot say that about you, it means life will continue to be bitter for you. Everyone in this place who is still living in sin knows that he or she is lacking peace. You know, sin can never give any man rest. Can never give any man fulfillment. Sin is just a temporal enjoyment preparing you for everlasting punishment. Sin is so sweet in the eyes of man, but in the innermost of that man, he knows that there is what? No peace. No wonder when you build your duplex, you put all kinds of protectors. If they throw, come on, knock out. Eh? Fireworks. Once they throw fireworks into your compound, the next thing you will shout, they have come again. Why? Because you know you have done something what? Wrong. That is why they are coming after you. The sinner runs when no one is what? Pushing him. He's afraid. We protect ourselves from all the evils, the physical things that may harm us. But we have failed to protect ourselves Protect our soul. Protect our soul from hell. That is man. Man wants a good life. But he has made up his mind. Never to give God his place in his or our life. The Lord restored that beautiful life to humanity. When he gave Jesus to us. Jesus is the only person that can give you that beautiful life. Jesus is the only person that can give you the peace you are looking for. Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 6, he said, I am what? The way, the truth, and what? That life he's talking about is that beautiful life. Jesus is the only person that can give you that beautiful life. No man can give you that life. Money. Positions of all kind. Fame. Connections with the eye and the mighty cannot give you that beautiful life. Only Jesus can give you that life. I can still remember. I still remember. I will never forget. As a teenager, on the 31st of December, 1989, I experienced that beautiful life. I came in contact with Jesus. I came in contact with the one who owns the beautiful life. And inside of me, he planted eternal life. So it is possible to live that beautiful life. I have it inside of me. Some of us, we have that beautiful life. That is why anytime, anytime, we feel secured in him. Do you have that life? Do you have that life? Do you have that hope of life eternal? What shall it profit you 
According to Mark chapter 8 verse 36, if you gain everything, the day Professor Ahad he left, I asked myself, all the certificates, all the award, none of the children can use it. In general, children don't be so. Can you use the award? Can you use a father certificate? He took part of the money and went to heaven and told God, God, I can help you. Open heaven. Let me pass. Look at $20 million. Everything ends here. Everything ends here. In this place. So why are we pursuing all the titles? If we introduce some of you in this church now. Brother. Okay, let me use Chinedu. Because Chinedu cannot do me anything. Brother Chinedu Hayazu. You see here. Yeah? He forgot to tell them that I am an engineer. Oh, I'm very sorry for the wrong introduction. I want to introduce to you engineer Chinedu Hayazu. He will get up and shall praise the Lord. A woman was introduced in a church where I saw many years ago Sister, so, 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 she refused to get up from the seat. Then somebody came to the MC. That is a mistake. She, her name is Ezine. Okay, Ezine. Ezine, so, so, so. She refused to get up. He said, ah, sorry, you forgot to put evangelist. Eh, okay, sorry. His name, Evangelist. Praise the Lord. That's so beautiful. Wow. People are mad of titles. None of these things, none of these things can give us what? Way. To where? Heaven. But that is what we want. What shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world, the whole title, and lose what? A soul. One fearful thing about life is that it is just one life. That is what scares me. One. I don't know why God didn't make it two. Church, can we ask God that question? Let's ask him now. Please, let us ask him. I want to ask him myself. 
Oh God, why did you give us two lives? Two, just two. We don't want three. Two lives. If I lose the first one, the second one, I'll prepare myself. Oh God, God has refused to give me an answer. That life is just what? One. One life. If you lose it here, you can never regain it again. We say it, life no get duplicates. We say it, but we're not careful for the way we live our lives. But I want to tell you, you can live another life. There is another life. You can live that life either with the devil in hell or you can live it with Jesus in heaven. It is appointed unto man to die once. After that comes what? Professor Augustine has to face his judgment that day. And he has gone. Every one of us will face the judgment seat. Everybody. No matter how powerful. Thank God that God did not come to stay in Nigeria. Because if God had come to stay in Nigeria, I know some of us will pay our way to heaven. Judgment awaits all, even you. Professor Emeritus Augustine Ikechuku Hayazu has lived his own life. And in staying with Christ, will you make heaven? It's not about claiming to be born again. It's not about being a minister of God. It's not about being a worker in the church. But living the life of Christ here on earth. That is what we are talking about. Church of God, you can experience that beautiful life. Can you come to Jesus now? Can you give him your whole self? I did that in 1989, 31st December. You can do it today. Today we have come to celebrate a man. It can be the day you have come to find life. So that it will be a day you will never forget in your life. Making your life to be beautiful is a choice. It depends on you. 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 Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. It said, I said before you, life and death. But my counsel is, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Eternal life is inside every born again child of God. Is there. After a year, we live the fullest of it in heaven. If you fail here, you fail there. If you make your pass in this place, you'll be accepted there. The rich man enjoyed all the beautiful things here on earth. He was praised by people when he died. The biggest minister then came for the burial and buried him. But he found himself where? In hell. Lazarus died, found himself in Abraham's bosom. It's not about your position or who you are. It's about life in Christ. Where will you spend eternity? Let us pray.
Do you want to experience that beautiful life? The life of peace. The life of joy, everlasting joy inside of you. Do you want to experience that life? You can experience that life even now. Even now, you can experience it now. I want you to pray that simple prayer and invite Jesus Christ into your life. I prayed that prayer in 1989 and it still lives in me till today. If you are in this place, you know you, are not, you have not accepted him. He's not living inside of you. Wherever you are, you just lay your hands on your chest. I will pray with you. You just lay your right hand on your chest. Jesus will come into your life now. He will give you that beautiful life. He will give you that life even now. Pray the simple prayer of telling the Lord Jesus to come into your heart. Pray that simple prayer. Say, him, Lord, I am sorry. I know I am a sinner. I know I have erred. I know I am living my own life without you. But I invite you into my life, Lord Jesus. Let me experience that beautiful life that you have decided to give me today. Father, we thank you. Blessed Jesus, we thank you. Thank you because you've given, you've given us the message. A message for the living. So that we we'll know how to number our days and apply our heart to wisdom. It's never your will that any soul should perish. It's never your will that we will live the life of bitterness. You came to give us life. And that life is life in abundance. Lord Jesus, come. Possess the hearts of your children who have invited you. Let them begin to experience that beautiful life. For us who have heard the word, help us to examine our ways. Help us to examine what we are doing presently. Help us to examine where we want to go immediately after this place. What we want to do. The evil that we have designed to perform. Help us, Lord. So now we examine it and know whether these things please you. Gracious Father, we ask for mercy. Strengthen also God to continue to radiate the beautiful life to all. Thank you, Lord, for calling on your son to come and rest. We we'll pray, oh God, anyone, everyone who have come to this place will not miss heaven after hearing this message. May this message not be against anyone. Rather, may it speak for us on the judgment day. Thank you, wonderful Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we we'll pray. Please, can you come forward to this place of family?
Church, can we stretch out our hands towards this family and commit them into the hands of God? Our Father has left to be with the Lord for the one who gave him so mommy blessing, who gave him as a father to the children, as the grandfather. Testify that they will do more than their father. Yes, Professor Augustine Nigechigo has left. But we're going to hear of his children doing exploits all over the world. They must not do like their father, they must do more than their father. Father, we thank you for this beautiful family standing before your presence. The church of God have committed them into your hands because we know without you, they can do nothing. So, Lord, we ask the space that have been created by the calling home of our Father Lord, you are going to fill that space. What my God, your son could not do for his family, you are going to do for them. What you could not achieve for them, Lord, you are going to achieve for them. Gracious Father, we ask, the strength that comes from the Holy Spirit, Lord, you will give unto them. Protection, Lord, you will protect them. The evil one will not sow any seed of discord among them. Rather, Lord, they will be more united and strong as a family. Strengthen our mommy. She is now going to be alone. But Lord, we know you coming to fill the gap. You have taken over. She will never be alone because you are always with her. Gracious Father, we soak this family in the blood of Jesus. All preparation towards the better we hand over to you. We ask, Lord, that you take absolute control and you will glorify yourself in their lives. Our desire for them is, Lord, they will achieve more than their father in this life. They will touch more lives for you. They will bring many to the kingdom of God. Father, we say thank you. Their faith will never grow weak. Rather, Lord, they will be more strong They'll be, more, they'll be stronger in their faith in serving you. The enemy will not see any way to touch any of them. The son of wickedness will never come near their dwelling place. Blessed be your wonderful name. For in Jesus' most excellent name, we pray. And amen. God bless you. You can return to your seat. Notices. Church, praise thy Lord. Program of events celebrating the life and times of our Father Emeritus Professor Augustine Nikechiko Ayazu continues as follows. Thursday, 18th March, 
commendation service. The commendation service will hold in this church by 8 a.m. So we invite everyone to come and let us celebrate Jesus. After the commendation service, the funeral cottage will proceed to River State University. 10 a.m., body received by the River State Faculty of Management Sciences. 10.30 a.m., special convocation ceremony at the convocation arena. Friday, 19th March, lying in repose and day vigil at his country home. Time, 9 a.m. Requiem Mass by Council of Knights in his residence. Time, 11 a.m. And funeral service at St. Michael's Anglican Church, Omoko. Time, 12 noon. Interment and reception at the country home in Omoko immediately after the funeral service. Sunday, 21st March, Thanksgiving service at St. Michael's Anglican Church, Omoko. May God Almighty receive Emeritus Professor Augustine Ikechuku Ayazu soul and grant him eternal rest in Jesus' name. We have Lenten service with Holy Communion tomorrow by 5 a.m. You are all invited. Praise the Lord. Um, Chinedu, please come for a vote of thanks. Sorry. Praise the Lord. The resident minister, Reverend, very Reverend um, Udofia, the assistant resident minister, um, very Reverend Ekong, uh, both of which have been very, 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 very supportive through this time. Um, the lovely choir, um, the leaders of this church, the Vice Chancellor of the River State University of Science and past Vice Chancellors um, here present, um, the former Chief Judge of River State, um, Justice Agumagu, who is also here, and other government um, officials and leaders here present, um, those of us joining from um, online, joining online, live streaming, friends and family, associates from various universities abroad where he was visiting professor, family and friends, I just want to say a big thank you a very big thank you to all of us. My father told me something um, out of the blue one, one, once. I, was, uh, I must have been 10 or 11. I was very young to understand fully what he said. And he said to me, Chinedu, if you're waiting for a bountiful inheritance. You're wasting your time, oh. Your father is not a businessman. The only two things I've invested in and I plan to invest in are knowledge and goodwill. I didn't understand it then because, um, you know, I just wasn't, I just wasn't um, old enough to understand what he meant. But every tribute 
that we've received from very high-placed individuals in government, from associates all over the world who have never stopped calling in, from, and from his drivers, from his cooks, from everybody, every single person has attested to one thing, that my dad lived a fulfilled life and his investment in goodwill was bountiful. And so I would like to please, please um, appeal to us to join us um, also in the um, later events that uh, my brother Timon has announced, um, the Thursday um, commendation service holding by 8 o'clock and the funeral service following um, at Omoku and um, the internments in our country home. Because everyone's presence will mean a lot to us, the family, and everyone's presence would also mean a lot to my dad, who I believe is watching all this and is happy that his one most precious investment, which is giving to others and which is serving people and which is investing in goodwill, has been achieved and he can lay to rest in God's bosom. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tomorrow's uh, Lenten service is not at 5 a.m., but 5 p.m. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Um, I would like all of us to rise as we observe a moment of silence in honor of the faithful departed. Heavenly Father, our God, it is you who gave Professor Augustine Nikechuku Hezu to us, and it has pleased you, Lord, to call him to yourself. May the soul of your servant find repose in your bosom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. While still standing, we bring the service to a close as we sing the closing hymn, Ancient and Modern 210, the last page of your program. We shall take the first and the last.
I want you to go in the strength of the Holy Spirit. Go under the covering of his wings. Let his power continue to strengthen and uphold you. Let his glory shine even upon your path. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us even now and forevermore. God bless you. Please. 